This webinar is being organized by 101 Domain and good good friends of ours from from MMX, from Minds and Machines, uh, Susan Lawrence and Simon Cousins have agreed to share their uh, very extensive knowledge. The first time I met Simon was at a uh, domain conference in New York City about three or four years ago and we had a little conversation about China and Simon uh, told me that he had spent some time there helping the International Olympic Committee to organize uh, the games in China. And I have to tell you, it was one of the most fascinating lunches that I had, uh, that I can recall because uh, he gave me a, a, just a wealth of knowledge about China. Uh, now this particular subject today is VIP. Dot VIP has done, you know, broken records, uh, especially in China. And so uh, we're going to let Simon just take this over. And, and I, I promise you, you won't be sorry that you took the time to listen in on this. So, Simon, I'm going to just kind of turn it over to you and, uh, you know, let you go through your presentation, and then we'll do some Q&A uh, at the end of the uh, recording. Oh, great, Joe. I'm looking forward to that. Joe, that's really generous. Thank you so much for saying that. And, and you know, I, I remember that first meeting with you guys also, and um, the warmth that 101 Domain has shown um, to us over these years has just been just been wonderful. So thank you, Joe, for your constant Certainly. generosity and um, and for organising these kinds of talks. You know, like in which we we do deeper dives into um, you know why the whys of China. Everyone can see the you know the the, the 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 results of China. Everyone can see the sales, but you know there's there's just never never quite enough understanding of insight into the whys of the um, of the domain boom in China. So it's really great to have this opportunity. Thank you. Surely. Cool. Shall we kick it off? Let's kick it off. We're ready. Well, we call this a mini masterclass. Um, I, I, I love that we've got some time for some Q&A. It's terrific. Uh, so we're probably going to be able to blast through these slides. Uh, and I think there's around 15 slides. Um, or I'm sitting here, 18 slides. We should be able to blast through these in about 20, 25 minutes or so. Um, now, these slides are specifically for people who um, that we've designed them with, with my colleague Susan. Uh, from MMX, we've designed these slides to uh, to answer some of those questions, like why has .VIP been such a um, substantial, you know, hit in China? Why has it broken almost every uh, commercial and sales and domain registration record that that, that that was possible to be set in China? There are actually some very um, straightforward answers to all of these questions. Uh, this isn't a random occurrence. Um, it isn't um, the, the, the domain sales of VIP in China haven't been because of extensive giveaways or price discounts or any of these other, you know, common but frankly kind of crazy uh, techniques that, that have been used from time to time in China to generate huge amounts of, of, of domain sales. Um, every single domain that's been sold from VIP since it launched in China has been sold at full retail price. And Joe, all of the all of the .VIP domains that you sold to your customers from 101 domain, likewise, have been sold at full retail prices. Um, so there's been zero um, uh, discounting because yeah, it's just so, so there's no giveaway no. schemes or anything. So people are truly valuing them. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And so, so the whole purpose of the talk um, and the slides, the simple slides we put together today, are to put some, you know, to put some. Uh, some, some, some justifications and some reasons and some, and some insights into why these three little letters, VIP, uh, have, uh, have such resonance and importance in China. Okay, so as I think all of our webinar attendees can see, um, that there are a number of records that the VIP set in China since being launched on the 18th of May. Um, fastest growing new domain extension in history. So no other TLD in the entire history of the new GTLD program has grown as quickly as .VIP from the day of launch. Um, and the, the second record that um, Minds and Machines NMX is, is particularly proud of is total billings, that is total sales in dollar terms for a new domain extension in the first month, uh, also um, the world record holder. Mm -hmm. um, I'll point out also that May 18, the launch date, that was really uh, specifically selected for .VIP because in Chinese, as you know, Joe, um, you know, the num numbers in China have, have a lot of importance and, and have a lot of um, like superstitious um, power behind them. And when you think of May 18, we selected that date specifically with our colleagues at MMX because um, May is, is pronounced in China because it's the fifth month, and 18 is Yao Ba, and, and which is 18, 1 8. So we, Wu Yao Ba is, is the way you'd say 5 1 8 in Mandarin. Mm -hmm. um, but when you say those words, it also sounds like I am getting rich. <laughs> so, oh, no kidding. 
Yeah, so, 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 but, so the 18th of, of, of May was specifically like a magical day, um, which, which the, the crew at Pins and, and we selected um, to launch this, um, this, this, this top level domain, which, which, which stands for not just richness, but also but a wealth of spirit and a wealth of generosity, as well as a wealth in monetary sense. Um, so it's a little, 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 little um, you know, acknowledgement of ancient Chinese culture, which we um, provided in the launch of .pip, and, and that, that did not go unnoticed in China. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm advancing the slide to number one. Okay. Um, okay. So we mentioned that we had a, a bunch of records. These are just three um, uh, quick and simple uh, overviews of the um, the sales figures. Now on the left hand uh, column, you see the first 24 hours of registrations. And, and again, I'll say registrations. Not a single domain was given away for free or discounted. So you see, in 24 hours, VIP sold for cash money um, over 167,000 domains in the first. Um, in the first 24, 116 per minute. Yeah, um, wow. yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty great. Um, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. So for yeah. those of you that are listening, I'll, I just want to tell you. So Simon's going to focus in on dot VIP, but uh, I, I think it's important for those of you that are listening that are thinking about, you know, how how can we do better in China? That a lot of the things that they've utilized here uh, are you know, the reasons that they've had this success. There's not a lot of other TLDs that have done this type of business in China. So I just, just want to preface that so people understand that there's a lot of lessons in your method here. So, and I'll leave, let you continue. Sorry for that. Right. And, and of course, behind uh, Joe, between, but behind you and Susan and myself, we have a whole team of our Chinese colleagues working, you know, working the project. So this just isn't a bunch of, um, um, you know, barely, barely competent, um, you know, Anglo-Saxons. Um, right. We have a full Chinese team in China actually executing on, on, on these programs. Um, okay, so we moved into seven days. We don't have to belabor these numbers. Seven days, we just passed through 213,000. And um, in 30 days, we, we passed through 480,000, almost a half a million domains uh, in wow. the first 30 days. So um, pretty, pretty, pretty great results, if I may say so myself. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Um, and thanks, Joe, again, 101 Domain, for, for helping us um, with, um, with, with, with those sales. I know many of your customers were smart enough to get in, get in early. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about, um, we're going to ask ourselves the question, okay, so, so why is this word, this VIP, why is it so white hot? And by that we mean like super hot. Why is it so super hot? Um, because this is the first question that, that we were asked all the way through the first launch month and ever since. Like, what is it about VIP? What, what is it that makes VIP so huge in China? Well, first of all, we like to say, or we like to answer this question by saying that VIP is a Chinese word. Now, we say it's a Chinese word and not an English acronym. So this is the first thing we'll encourage our non-Chinese friends, domain name investors, registrants, users, business people. So the first thing we, we want really, the first point we want to make clear, in China, when you're speaking Chinese, when you're being Chinese and you're living your life and running a business in China, you encounter the word VIP every day of your life. And, and when you encounter, when you're Chinese, when you encounter the word VIP in China, your mind doesn't go to the English meaning of VIP. It goes to something else. Now I've got a nice little piece of evidence here. The very first 747, uh, Boeing 747 um, airplane that was um, purchased by Air China, which is the People's Republic of China's flag carrier, uh, in 1988, um, when they purchased the first 747, Air China introduced its new Air China logo. And you'll see in the upper left hand corner you have what's a stylized phoenix, like the, 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 the legendary bird, the flaming bird. Well that phoenix is made up of the letters VIP. And to this to this day, Air China still continues with that exact same logo. So the flag carrier of China has built VIP into their logo. And that goes a long way um, to build a consciousness in the society, I would suppose. Absolutely right, Joe. And VIP has, has been in Chinese language since well before 1988. Now, we'd like to encourage all of our um, listeners and, 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 and friends on, on, on the call today not to think, or rather to unlearn the acronym very important person. Mm -hmm. So, VIP in China is not 
very important person. Just like fortune cookies, we, we presume that fortune cookies make sense in China. We presume that VIP makes sense in the same way. Well, fortune cookies aren't Chinese at all, and no one in China knows what a fortune cookie is. <laughs> fortune cookies were originally Japanese uh, San Francisco invention. Um, and, and in a similar way, you make a presumption that fortune cookies are Chinese. Um, actually, VIP, in, a, in the same way, is, is, not, is not viewed in China as, uh, as a very important person. So you could, you could query any random 1,000 Chinese people in any province of China, whether it's like one of the advanced eastern, as I mean, you know, advanced in terms of infrastructure, you know, one of the modern cities like Shanghai, you know, on the eastern coast, or, or, or maybe one of the, you know, the, the, the less, um, you know, the less westernized uh, western provinces. You could take a random 1,000 Chinese people and ask them what VIP means. And none of them, maybe one in 10,000, will say, oh, this VIP is an English acronym meaning very important person. Nobody in China will give you that. So it doesn't mean the same thing over there. Just, you just got to, you know, to understand what VIP means in China and to understand how to use VIP domains with your business that might touch on China, just unlearn this now. VIP is not Do very they important. pronounce it the same? Yeah, VIP. Because, you know, in, Ch in China, you know, Joe, there's a system of language called pinyin. And, and that's just one of the romanization systems, so-called romanization systems, which is where you can take the Chinese characters, whether it's, you know, it's spoken in Mandarin or spoken in Cantonese or any of the other uh, Chinese yeah. dialects, and you can render the, that, that form of uh, Chinese into A through Z, right? The letters A through Z. So, so every, every child in, in China is taught how to pronounce A through Z. Okay. okay. So let's, let's dive into a quick history lesson on, on VIP in China. So, the word VIP, and you'll notice I keep on saying word, not acronym, right? Because VIP right. is not an acronym in China. Um, the word VIP first entered China in 1965. And remember, the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949. So this is, you know, not all that long after the founding of, of New China when Chairman Mao, you know, declared the, the founding of the PRC uh, on the 1st of October 1949. Now, this, this word entered the Chinese language um, officially into the official, at the time, the official government, uh, Chinese government um, uh, standard dictionary, if you will. That there's, and to this day, there remains a standard Chinese um, government organization, not dissimilar to what the Alliance Francaise does in France and around the world. Mm -hmm. um, as you'd know, like the French language is, is basically codified by the French government. Um, the the right, Vatican the real codified strong in, it in France, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and the Vatican, right? The Vatican decides when a word should be Latin or not. In a, in a similar way, there is an official dictionary, if you will, in China for foreign words. And, 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 that, and that central Chinese government organization, I think we've written it out here on the slide, it's called, it's translated as, the Western Languages to Chinese Translations and Writings Ministerial Joint Experts Specification Committee. Um, and, and if you spend any China, any time in China, you'll recognize these like super long government organization names. It's something that's um, typical in China. Yeah. So, so this word entered the language in 1965 to mean honored guest, not as VIP. Literally so the I word was question. Not yeah. maybe just getting a little off topic, but I'm curious. Um, when you guys applied for VIP, were you aware of this? Because I know there were like five or six applicants for that term, and you guys, you know, won it in the auction. Yeah, I mean, some of the founders of, of, of Minds and Machines, um, you know, knew from the very first day that, yeah. um, that because, you know, like we have a, one of the co-founders of, of Minds and Machines is a gentleman by the name of David Wheel, W-E-I-L-L, uh, -L, um, who remains um, uh, the, the, the lead inside of the Minds and Machines organization for all of the China business. And, and David lives in Singapore and he's been a lifelong um, business person in, in China. And, and David, David's actually known since day one. So you get a little insight on this. Yeah, the importance of VIP in China. Because, you know, you've only got to spend, you know, 20 minutes in, in, in China to see the word VIP everywhere. Right. Okay, so, um, honored guest. The government brought this term, term in, put it into the official government dictionary, and said, this means honored guest. And what we've got here, just um, up on the left-hand corner, is an example of the official use of, of honored guest. Okay. Now, um, 
What we've got here is a Google Books Ngram, and for, for those who may not be familiar, this is a really handy tool to research language. So what Google's done over the last, I don't know, 15 years or so is they've scanned every book in almost existence, um, sometimes to the chagrin of publishing companies. But Google's gone ahead and scanned every book. And, and not many people realize that Google has been scanning books, not just in English, but in every one of the world's most important languages, including, very much including Chinese. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see that um, when you do a, a simple search for the term VIP, looking at simplified Chinese, in, in all of the, the corpus of, um, of, of Chinese uh, books that, 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 that the Google Ngram program has scanned, mm -hmm. you'll see that um, there was a, a leap, like a sudden increase in use in the word VIP in China in 1978. Okay. So the, the word came in in 65 and it really started, it, it had a boom in use in 1978. Why? We're here to answer questions today, Joe. The why is because 1978 was the period in which um, uh, Chairman Deng Xiaoping, who was the gentleman who took over the chairmanship position of the party when um, after Mao Zedong uh, passed yeah. away. And, and, and it was Deng Xiaoping who was viewed as the father of the, the so-called reform and opening up uh, policy in China. And that's a, that's a complicated Chinese government phrase that basically means it's okay to make money. So up until the reform and opening up uh, policy was approved and championed by Deng Xiaoping, it was not okay to make money because it was a strictly Marxist-Leninist system of government. And right. Deng Xiaoping came along in 1978. In fact, he had this, this idea for many years before he assumed power in 78. But it was Deng that, um, that opened up China. And it was at this time that the word VIP leapt into common currency. And you can see that there have been some ups and downs um, since 1978, but if you, if you trace a, a direct line between 78 and now, you see there's been a constant increase in use uh, of the term since then. Okay. Now, this is the second important um, insight into VIP in China, and this will help all of the domain name investors especially um, that are listening today. Um, firstly, VIP doesn't mean necessarily, as you know, VIP doesn't mean very important person. VIP also stands for products and for places and for experiences. So in China, a product can be VIP, a place can be VIP, and an experience can be VIP. So in the Western context, a VIP is always a person, right? Uh, you know, the, the, the president of, you know, of, of the United States is, is by definition a VIP. Right. But, uh, if this were China, the White House would also be VIP. And a vacation, you know, a luxury vacation to Washington DC to see the White House would also be VIP. Mm -hmm. But for thousands of years, Joe, as you know, China has been developing for over 5,000 years a culture of hospitality. You know, anyone who spent a day in China would have experienced this. People in China are so kind to tourists, so kind to visitors. Um, so what's developed is that um, in China, this culture of hospitality has been connected to the term VIP, the, the term of honoured guest. So you'll see just... Crikey. Sorry about that. Um, we're still online, Joe? Yeah, we're good. I right. hear you fine. Yeah, my Cortana just popped up. I must have Cortana must have thought I said, "Hey, Cortana." Um, so, so you'll see just uh, some quick quick examples here. You'll see that places such as airport, airport lounges and promotions are also VIP. And this is one one of the important insights because this is one of the characteristics that's led to the enormous number of domains that have been sold in China. Well, it's kind of kind of really cool that it has that meaning there because um, I mean when you you know, you consider there's sort of a double benefit because everybody in the United States, I suppose, would like to be thought of as, you know, as a VIP, and yet, you know, it has so much more meaning in, in Chinese culture. Yeah, quite right. So, so it doesn't make a lot of sense in English, you know, like in the United States. You probably wouldn't put your hotel, I mean, if, if you happen to own, say, say you own a boutique hotel. Um, I'm in New York today, so, you know, there's probably 50 boutique hotels within, you know, a couple of miles where I am now. Um, mm -hmm. You wouldn't naturally think that you put your, your hotel into a dot .vip, would you, you know? You might put it into a dot .hotel, um, yeah. but you wouldn't put it into a dot .vip. In China, you absolutely would put it, and you are putting your hotel, your boutique hotel, into mm -hmm. a dot .vip. And, or or the, the, um, the, the loyalty program, you know, maybe for your, I don't know, 
you know, you've got a drone company, you're making drones and you want people to buy more drones. So, you know, that your loyalty program, if you buy a certain number of drones, you'll join the VIP, you'll join the VIP program um, of, the, of the drone company. So that would be a natural, natural use of, um, of, of a loyalty program. Anyway, we'll move on. So, so we, we're now going to turn our attention to, to the idea of wealth, right? Because wealth is really built in to the whole um, market presentation of the VIP domains in China. Mm -hmm. now, the sharp-eyed amongst us would have noticed there's a funny little thing, like a funny little shape above the V in the VIP logo. And I'm not talking about the, the shape of the Chinese character, uh, but rather the, I don't know what you'd say it looks like. It looks sort of like a hat, maybe? Well, actually, if you're a Chinese, this is an instantly um, recognizable shape. And the shape is the form of gold ingots. And the form that gold ingots have taken in China for thousands of years. Now, those of us that are American or Australian or European, we think of gold ingots, we kind of think of those brick-sized things. Oh, brick, yeah. You think of Fort Knox and all those bricks piled right. up, right? Right. In China, they don't do it in brick shapes, and they haven't for thousands of years. They, they cast, Chinese cast gold into this yuan bao shape. So you'll see that, and, and yuan bao, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, the yuan bao um, is, is, has become over thousands of years the, the go-to symbol for, for, for wealth because it's, right. it's gold, right? So the .vip logo in China has had a yuan bao built into it. Um, since the, the very first day of availability to remind Chinese registrants and Chinese business people and Chinese web users that um, VIP stands for wealth as well as all of the So, so there's, um, you know, you get people who, let's just say those people who would think, oh, I don't know, like maybe somebody's being prideful or, I mean, is that the same there? Or? You know what, I mean, Joe, last time you were in China, I'm sure you would have visited one of those um, you know, big markets where you can buy all the fake purses and the fake watches, you know, and the fake suitcases. I can buy those um, online, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there, there are these gigantic, um, you know, markets, like multi-story. Yeah. They're called markets, but they're multi-story buildings, basically. And every floor, you know, is full of fake stuff. And it's only yeah. true. You know, the, the local Chinese people do not want to buy fake stuff. And they, they simply don't. It's the tourists who buy the fake stuff. Because yeah. in China, the... the I mean, if, if you have wealth and if you have power, it's expected that you show your wealth and power. It, it's not considered to be gauche or declassé to, 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 to show that you're wealthy. It's expected. Like if you have a certain you know, position in uh, the hierarchical society that is China, China's not the only hierarchical society, society by a long way, um, but you know, it, it is a very hierarchical society. And if you do have wealth, it, you're expected to drive a great sports car. You know, if you're the Chinese equivalent of Mark Zuckerberg, you don't go to work every day in a hoodie. You know, you don't work in a cubicle, you know, next to all the other coders. You, you, it's weird. Like, yeah. I don't mean at all to be boastful, but I'm a boss, right? I'm a CEO of a company that, that has, you know, dozens of Chinese employees. And whenever we have a new Chinese employee, um, it, typically the Chinese employee will stand up whenever I walk into the room because that's the way it's done in China, right? Boss is here. Everyone stands up to attention, and, and yeah. you know we quickly knock that out of our new employees. You know we say no, no, no. Like we're all yeah. we're all on the same level here, but but in China, yeah, if, if you've got power or, or influence, you're expected to to demonstrate it. Um, yeah. So yeah, so 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 this is why we say in China to be rich is honourable. So you get honour by having the idea of being rich, and dot VIP names enable um, brands, businesses, places, people, experiences to show their honor. Would, would, you, would you equate it with, you know, the same way like we use .com in the United States or around the world? Or I'm just curious of that. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I'd love to compare VIP to com. Um, in China, VIP has a deep meaning mm -hmm. uh, where com doesn't. I mean, sure, com is the default. I'm, I'm not going to run down .com. .com is the 900-pound gorilla of domains in China, as it is just about everywhere. Um, but let's. But the word C O M has no meaning in China. Uh, you right. can, those same thousand Chinese people you asked if they knew the, you know, the Western meaning, the English meaning of VIP, you could ask them the same question for com. You could say, hey, what does com mean? No one will say commercial. No one. No one, because it's just three <laughs> letters, three random letters. Yeah, where VIP is anything but three random letters. It's three very, very special letters. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so 
Um, we've got the we've got the groundwork out of the way. Um, we understand the the basis of the, the, this term, this word VIP in China. So let's look at some use cases of VIP in China. We've got I don't know maybe half a dozen or so use cases that we can walk through here. This is certainly not exhaustive, uh, but just some common use cases just to show you VIP. So the first the first and certainly not the most important, but one really common use of VIP is loyalty cards. Now, you know, like in my pocket right now, I've probably got like a Chipotle card, you know, and I've probably got, I don't know, my Delta card. And I've got maybe two or three, you know, like loyalty cards in my wallet right now. If you ask any random, you know, Chinese consumer in China to show you her purse or his wallet, it will be stuffed full, like literally stuffed full of loyalty cards. Loyalty programs um, are so popular and important in China. You know, practically every corner shop, and no exaggeration, practically every corner shop has a loyalty card program. Um, and what we're just showing here on screen at the moment is just a random selection that we pulled off Baidu image search for our loyalty cards. You'll notice one Chinese word that appears on every loyalty card. Yeah. <laughs> They're all VIP cards because the Chinese word, Joe, for loyalty card is VIP card. And you'll see in the very first uh, paragraph here of our text, you'll see on the second line in, in, in open quotes, VIP and a Chinese character that looks like a, a plus sign with a, a, a horizontal and a diagonal hanging off it, that, that character is pronounced ka, K-A, if you will. And that's the word for card. So if you're using playing cards, same character you use. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're talking about uh, credit cards in China, same character, card. The ka is card. Yeah. yeah. And, Second from the English pronunciation originally. So loyalty loyalty cards are called VIP card. That is the word. There's no alternative word. That's it. So if you're a company, whether you're Air China or the Bank of China or a corner, you know, a corner shop or a hairdressing salon, mm -hmm. your loyalty card is called a VIP card. Okay. Now, companies in China want to treat their customers like honored guests because this is the way you do it in China, like you give hospitality. It's been like that for thousands of years. So mm -hmm. consumers love to feel that they're valued, that they're honoured, that they receive honour, that they receive face from the companies that they, they buy products or services from. Okay. So by, 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 by a company giving me a VIP card, it, it makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel that I am a valued, honoured guest to that company. And you'll see there again, like I, 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 you know, a company can be VIP, a program can be VIP. Mm -hmm. So because Chinese consumers love VIP cards so much and use them so extensively, and Chinese, I tell you, my Chinese friends, they're the best shoppers in the world, you know, they're really good at shopping, yeah. um, really good at consuming, right? Um, yeah. so, so every moment of every day when you're shopping or consuming in China, you see this word VIP right in front of you. Okay. Oh, here's some other examples. Um, uh, okay, so upper left-hand corner, biggest bank in China, Bank of China, VIP card. Uh, Hagen Dust, a, a, a great American brand that's been incredibly successful in China. And by the way, Hagen Dust's positioning in China, it isn't just supermarket ice cream. It's like a destination. It's a date restaurant that you take. Oh, no with. kidding. Yeah, yeah. And oh, you can, good ice cream. You can spend a hundred bucks on ice cream at Hagen Dazs. Oh, no kidding. Okay. <laughs> it's like Rodeo Drive. I, I, I do never spend a hundred bucks in one night on ice cream, but uh, yeah, yeah. that wouldn't I'm be good. I'm sure you in Brooklyn also, right? <laughs> but, um, or Rodeo Drive. Same, same. So Hagen Dazs has come into the... And you see, it's gold, right? It's a gold yeah. IP club, right? Um, C-Trip uh, is, is, is China's biggest um, travel agency. Basically, it's uh, Expedia um, for, for China. Incredibly successful. Uh, listed on NASDAQ, actually traded, publicly traded on NASDAQ. Uh, their program is VIP card. Uh, Greenery, lower left-hand corner, um, one of the hottest new um, healthy restaurants, like um, organic, you know, green, um, um, green food, um, what they call green food. Uh, it, it's a VIP program. Um, I, just, I, I know one thing, you know, even around the world, you know, loyalty clubs are really important today, uh, you know, where, where there's recurring revenue for businesses and, you know, it really matters. See how this would... I'm hoping all these guys bought their .vip domains. Well, look, you know, and we're probably talking mostly today to American and European and Australian, you know, um, um, customers of one-on-one domain. Well, I, I would encourage anyone who has Chinese customers 
So it doesn't matter whether you're, you're a boutique hotel, you know, in San Diego, or you're a golf resort in, you know, anywhere in the U.S., or you're, you know, you're a winery in Australia, or you're a, you're a tourist destination in Europe. If you have Chinese customers, or if you'd like to have Chinese customers, or if you'd like to show your Chinese customers face, if you'd like to give them honor and make them feel valued, start a VIP program and attach it to a .VIP domain name. No brain. Okay. We talked about um, people, places, experiences, products. So let's let's take a, a quick look at exclusive experiences. Um, so again, just random selection. Um, so here's a couple of examples. Um, just if if you search for VIP experiences or VIP, um, the Chinese word for experiences on Baidu, um, this is the kind of um, result you get. So in the in the top, uh, we just located a a holiday hotel, like a leisure hotel in Chengdu, uh, which is a, a, an ancient city in West, a really beautiful city in, in Western China. It has a lovely old town. They've been able to keep and restore their old town neighborhoods. Um, fascinating, like little back alleys, Chinese alleys and noodle shops and fabulous food and traditional artists and, you know, entertainers. So, so one of the hottest hotels in that neighborhood is the Chengdu VIP Holiday Hotel. And VIP isn't the translation. VIP is the Chinese word. So you'll see that the Chinese in the upper left-hand corner, you see the first two characters, that's Chengdu. And then the, the, the next three characters, VIP. And the remainder is... If they put them in English uh, or in Latin script, right along no, with the Chinese. The name. This is the name of the hotel. It's the Chinese word. VIP is a Chinese word. And it has been since 1965. Hmm. And there aren't many of these like English loan words that have come into Chinese. VIP is one of the few. Right. Um, Wanda, number two, Wanda, Wanda is um, the most successful, um, the, the, the richest man in China is the chairman and founder of Wanda. And Wanda is basically a shopping a shopping mall company, so much more. Well, they're also in entertainment and banking and financial services and so on. But um, but basically Wanda, as a retail brand in China, is known for shopping malls. And, and like the, the founder of Wanda really cracked this, um, this formula for shopping malls. Um, he, he took like the Western, like the, basically the American concept of a shopping mall and mm -hmm. added Chinese characteristics. That's probably the, the topic for a whole other conversation. Um, but, but he really sort of made the, the American shopping mall concept work for China. Uh, brilliant, brilliant concept. And, and you'll see that um, their, I mean, their, their annual cruise party for their most loyal customers is a VIP mm -hmm. cruise. Um, and, and you've got the examples here of like, um, you know, parties are often VIP parties as well. So, um, just a few examples of ex of, of, uh, of of experiences. Um, education is a nice use case. Um, China is. Uh, I don't need to tell you, Joe, that China is um, uh, deeply committed to education. Uh, I think uh, the United States takes more Chinese students than from any other country of the world. My country, Australia, same same. More Chinese students in Australian universities than any other nationality aside from mm -hmm. Australia. Um, so, learning English in China is just a huge business. You can imagine, right? The number of people in China, Chinese people in China, who want to learn English. Um, well, New Oriental is the biggest of the um, foreign language and English language um, uh, businesses, like education businesses in China. And mm -hmm. the, the highest level of certification, of English certification, that you can get uh, with New Oriental as a Chinese person is known as the VIP program, the Overseas Testing VIP program. Okay. Um, online services. VIP is absolutely ubiquitous throughout the web uh, in China. We just have some random examples here. Um, if, if you're an online company in China, like a Chinese online company, if you're running a social media service, if you're running an online shopping service, if you're doing O2O, like the Chinese equivalent of Uber, for example, if you're online in China and you're a business, guaranteed. You have what is uh, O2O? I, I don't... What is that? I, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, it's like a web web business term. It means online to offline. So, online like, to offline. yeah, online to offline. Yeah. So Uber's like the classic, you know, O2O example because you book the car online and then you get fulfilled offline. Uh, right. Blue Apple, another one, right? So you you book the meal subscription program online and offline you get delivery of something. I see. Uh, okay. So O2O is like a huge booming area of um, of online entrepreneurialism in China. Um, but basically, look, if you're a business and you're online, you have a VIP program or your company has a VIP program. 
Right. Um, there's a bunch of examples here, including from Taobao, Alibaba's. Like Taobao is the world's biggest online store, which is bigger than Amazon and eBay put together. <laughs> and wow. Taobao, like ex most exclusive level of shopping, is the VIP program. Uh, you'll see Weibo, W-E-I-B-O. Weibo is the Twitter of China because you can't get Twitter in China. Uh, Weibo, the you know the, the premium level program is the VIP program. There are literally hundreds of thousands of examples. In fact, talking about Weibo, in the lower um, right-hand corner, we've just got a little screenshot here. Mm -hmm. If you go to Weibo, Twitter, okay, so it's Chinese Twitter, works exactly the same way. Um, if you just, like if you would go to Twitter, like right twitter.com, and just search for account holders, basically account names that have the, the word VIP in the account name, right? Uh, I mean, if I was to go to Twitter right now and search for Alanya, I'd probably only get like three or four, and you'd be one of them, right, Joe? Probably. Well, if you go to the Chinese Twitter and you search for just VIP, like just show me every account that has the word VIP in it, um, you see here that there are more than one million account holders on Weibo, on China's Twitter, that have the word VIP in their account name. I guess what we're getting at here is that, I mean, we're just, we're just bludgeoning you, Joe, with, no, with, with it's, evidence it's, that it's, VIP is everywhere in China. Okay. okay. Um, events. Events are a really super important um, thing to do in China because, you know, in China, the number one um, recreational pursuit in, in all of China is going out. You know, like basically you go out to shop, you go out to eat, and, and when you eat, you often go out in a large group. Basically, you're going out for an experience. It's the number one recreational um, um, you know, pursuit outside the home. So events are absolutely critical uh, importance for any, any company which is marketing or promoting its, its products or services. And, and you simply can't do an event in China without putting VIP into the name of the event. And here's just, again, a random selection. And I, 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 mean, I invite anyone watching the webinar today to, to go to Baidu and, and do a search for you know, the Chinese word for event and, and VIP. And you, you, you've got millions of, um, of, of hits. OK, luxury. OK. Go, 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 go ahead, please. No, 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 continue. I'll, I, I see we have some questions we'll do at the end. Cool, we're only two slides. So we're, we're, this is the second last, I think. So I know I've gone on a little bit long. Um, luxury. I just want to close off with luxury because I want to just return our initial thinking to that UN bow, that Chinese gold ingot. Um, so luxury is also, I mean, your VIP doesn't have to be luxury, but remember, to be rich in China is to be honourable. You know, to, or rather, to be rich is to have honour. And it's not the only way that you achieve honour. You know, you could be, you can achieve honour by being a school teacher, you know, like a, a, a school teacher with modest means. So, Mm -hmm. Maxim was saying that the path to honor must be richness, you know, and that's a misunderstanding of Chinese, Chinese culture from, from, from the West. But, but there's no question that one of the many paths to honor is, is to be wealthy, right? Um, so, so here's just a few use cases for luxury, the luxury sector. And the luxury sector in China has absolutely embraced uh, VIP uh, as its own. So, so um, we talked about Taobao before. Um, the VIP program um, uh, in, uh, in in Taobao. If you're buying up, basically, if you're if you're buying like a premium level uh, of, uh, of of product you know, on Taobao, then you're in the VIP program. You see that Mercedes Benz and Porsche are, are other examples. In the lower right hand corner, you have the um, a jewelry, a, a, an influential jewelry industry group, uh, which has built VIP, much like Air China, right? Because Air China is welcoming its honoured guests on board. Air China built VIP into their logo. Um, yeah. Also, the, the jewelry business circle also built VIP into their their diamond, their cut diamond logo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to close out here. I think this is our, our last slide, uh, Joe and Susan. Um, we've just we've just chosen this stock photography picture, right? Just to show that you know, like, there's a new lifestyle in China, and it's youthful and it's casual, and you know, it's it's just. You know, young, young people in China are really not that different than young people in the United States or Europe now or Australia. You know, regular young people are looking for a lot of things. They're looking for, you know, a comfortable life, and an interesting life. They're looking for novel experiences. 
you know, and they're looking for respect. You know, they're looking for respect from, 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 from you know, their culture and their friends and, and companies they're, they're choosing to support, you know. Online services they're choosing to use and companies they're choosing to buy stuff from and, and beers they're choosing to, to consume. You know, Chinese consumers are looking for this kind of honourable lifestyle. Yeah. And, and this is one of, I just want to close with this because, you know, these are your customers. You know, so whether, you know, you're watching the webinar today and, and, and you're providing goods or services for which you've got Chinese customers or Chinese consumers, these are your customers. You know, these young men and young women have money to spend and they want to spend money on your, your product, your service, your experience, your place. Um, right. When you're in a .vip, when you've got a website or a service or a program in a .vip domain, then you make sense to these consumers. When you've got your website in a .vip, your Chinese consumers, they get it. They say, ah, this is the program, this is the, 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 the product, the service, the experience for which I'm an honored guest. And that's what the consumers are looking for. Very good. So I, I have one, I, I have a question and there, I have a few other questions here from yeah. you know, the uh, attendees. One, you know, just related to this slide that you just finished with, do, do, does China have the same kind of uh, market importance related to millennials like we do in the United States? Is that the same kind of trend? I'm just curious. No, we talk about, we talk about Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, you know, like, or at least marketers do. And marketers love to, you know, talk about these generations. Right. Um, you know, personally, I'm a Gen Xer, right? China doesn't use Gen X, Y, and Z. Um, China uses, like, years, so you're post a certain year. So the, 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 the divisions of, like, what your state of mind as a consumer uh, and as a, a citizen is, is mm. typical post a certain year. So yeah, there is a, within the marketing and communications trade in China, there's a similar sort of, you know, concept of, of, of people from a certain generation are looking for certain things and have certain shared, um, you know, certain shared characteristics and a certain shared way of looking at the world around them. And certainly China does have uh, this kind of segmentation on a generational basis. Okay. One of, one of the other questions here is, um, you know, you started off your presentation talking about uh, sort of a lucky date to, to kick off. Your, yeah, that was my, my I think. You know, I, I, what is the deal with luck in marketing to China, to Chinese people? Um, I've heard of that before. Uh, I've heard of people even in, you know, the domain business uh, asking a price that uses a lucky number and having, you know, some success because of that. But I'm curious... Yeah. If, you know, what you've learned about that, why you do that. Joe, why don't you answer this one? You know this stuff. You know this answer. <laughs> well, not really. And that is, you know, I've always wondered why, I mean, is it because oh, it's a lucky number? I don't, I don't know. You're being modest. He, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joe is being very modest. He knows this stuff. <laughs> Joe has many Chinese customers. Um, okay. So, so luck, that's kind of a, look, what I'll say is this, that there, there, there are deep, subtleties mm -hmm. in the answer. There are deep subtleties in the reasons why Chinese people, whether they be consumers or governments or media or whatever, you know, there are, there are subtleties built into Chinese culture that put great importance on numbers. Numbers, have, um, numbers can have a mystical or superstitious influence. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm Australian. I grew up with superstitions. You know, my, my mom, you know, freaked out whenever I'd walk under a ladder, you know? And she had the whole don't put shoes on the tabletop thing. And I still to this day don't know why. But she'd freak out, you know, in my boyhood home in, in Melbourne, Australia. She'd freak well, out. I don't think anybody wants to have their wants anybody's mom wants them to put their shoes on. I remember I was ten years old or something and I just got new school shoes and I put the shoe box on the on the living room table. Oh, okay, okay, now I put it. Because it's shoes on the table, you know, so, so I think every culture has superstition. China is much older than my culture. My culture, Australia, it's like 200 years old or something, you know, a little yeah. bit more than 200 years. Man, in China, you've got 5,000 plus years, you know, of, of, of parents teaching their kids those, those same kinds of lessons. So China had a lot of time to invent stuff. You know, so like what, what are what are the only lucky numbers I know are like eights. I know that the Chinese people like eights, and they like repeating numbers. What are just tell me a little more about the nuance there, and what's not lucky? 
<laughs> sure, sure. Well, again, not to, not to do a deep dive into the subtleties, uh, which is like the, the way in which numbers um, work with each other, so in certain sequences. And I, I know that me, most of your customers, Joe, um, working in investing in domains with a, with a, with a view to China as a marketplace, yeah. um, you know, most of your customers have at least a passing uh, familiarity with this idea. So, so you know, I don't need to, 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 to go down to you know, to a, we don't really need to go to 101. But, but you know, in, in, in a nutshell, pretty much every number from, from one, from zero through nine, you know, has a range of meanings. And in some cases, a wide range of often conflicting meanings. Mm -hmm. So the subtleties are like stacking the numbers up and putting them in certain orders. And also with certain um, different contexts, they mean different things. But if you want to look at the really simple stuff, I think everyone in the world knows that eight is lucky, but actually, it's not lucky at all. Eight literally means wealth. So, so because the pronunciation in Cantonese of eight is fa, and fa sounds like ba, and ba is 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 is, is so fa, prosperity, wealth. Ba sounds like ba. Ba is the pronunciation for eight. It's pretty simple. So it's like a direct line between the way that you say eight. Like imagine if when I said eight, you're wondering to yourself, huh? Did he mean I ate a hamburger, or I ate eight hamburgers, right? I mean, <laughs> when, when I say eight, it can mean a bunch of different stuff, right? It can mean feet, yeah. or past ten feet, or eight. Well, in Chinese, because the way the Mandarin language works, when you say a number, ba for eight, that can actually mean a bunch of other stuff, because Chinese has a fewer number of sounds, of phonemes, than English does. Yeah, nine typically stands in for eternity, forever. So, like. You know, if, and we've we've talked about this so many times before, Joe, um, with your, your you know with the customers you 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 have to invest in Chinese domains, or rather invest in domains for China. You know, like so 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 eight eight ish domains are great for like you know usages in which you're talking about money and and, and wealth, but but nines, you know, stand in for like forever and eternity. So if we're talking about like you know d designing domains, for example, for use around love and relationships. And, and long term things, and like when you're talking about like recruitment, for example, for, for younger people, like when you know when you, you think about a, a type of Chinese consumer that might be like a young grad, you know, so graduates are typically looking for their first job. They, they want to make sure it's a really good job. It's their first step on their career path. They're thinking more about nines than eights. You know, they're not thinking about wealth immediately. It's my first job. I'm not going to make much money. It's my first job, but they are looking for something that's going to take them for their whole life. You know, so they're right. more thinking nines than eights. So, so what, what's a number to stay away from? Well, typically four is a, a problematic. Usually problematic, not always, because the Mandarin pronunciation of, of four is si. That sounds a lot like death or corpse. So typically fours are a little bit troublesome. But you know what? We've we've been asked a thousand times. Okay, like, what do you, you guys know nothing about Chinese? You say that four is always unlucky. What about four dot cn? Right, the big auction platform in China, incredibly successful auction platform. Why is how, why aren't they death dot cn? And we say, well, you know, Johnny Xu, the founder of four, brilliant guy, good friend of and and partner of ours, Joe. Um, Johnny, John, when Johnny was able to get four dot cn, when he was able to get one of the very very rare like single number, one single letter, letter, yeah, he was offered number. four. So, so his, his, his positioning, his market positioning was that, you know, Johnny is, is, a, is a great music lover and in the diachromatic scale of music, the do, re, mi, fa, you know, the, 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 yep. the diachromatic, it's called diachromatic scale, do, yep. re, mi, fa, well, fa right. is the fourth note on the musical scale and fa sounds like fa, which means wealth, <laughs> which means yeah. richness. So, okay, so he had his own um, Maybe he isn't all that Music and wealth, you know, and everyone said, oh, yeah, I get it. Okay, I get it. So, so yeah. for, you know, you can, you, basically there's no rules. You know, there, there's guidance for lucky numbers in China, but no real rules. Okay, I have another question here. Um, uh, what, what about the difference between, you know, I mean, if somebody's interested in doing business in China or with Chinese people, should they, what about these IDNs? Uh, how, and, and by the way, does VIP, dot VIP support IDNs? And should they? Or, you know, I'm just curious of that aspect of it. Yeah, so, so I, I'm, 
So, so I can just give my personal opinion, which is not the opinion of, of Minds and Machines or probably anybody else. Um, IDNs, it's a little early for IDN still in China. Um, mm -hmm. IDNs have been coming like real soon now for like more than 10 years. And, okay. and while there are many IDNs that are sold in China, and, 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 and many are sold every day, that they're still not really in common currency. Yeah, um, that's true. In, in VIP, and the day will probably come. I mean, you wouldn't want to base your entire investment portfolio, you know, on my advice that the day will probably come. Um, but you know, I mean, it's common. It's common wisdom that the day will eventually come for IDNs. And dot VIP does support IDNs. Does oh, it support does. Chinese to the left of the dot and VIP to the right of the dot. Um, however, those domains have not yet been um, been released um, for use because Minds and Machines is a really smart, pragmatic company, like one of the smartest registries in the world, and it's 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 a little premature. Um, so IDN.VIP is not yet available. Okay. All right. Um, I think we've come to the conclusion here. Uh, I want to thank you guys, uh, Susan Lawrence and Simon Cousins. Uh, we've had a, a wonderful discussion about .VIP. Uh, I hope there were some nice lessons uh, in this conversation for our clients. Uh, this will be online at blog.101domain.com. And I want to wish you guys a, a great holiday weekend and uh, looking forward to uh, continued success with this .vip domain name. It's been really a nice run. We, we, it's, it's actually uh, created a lot of interest for us over the past uh, four or five months. Uh, just an amazing you know, influx of inquiries and interest in it. So uh, I just want to wish you guys continued success and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll continue to do real well with it. All well, right. So well, thank, you, thank you, Simon. Have a great weekend. And thanks everyone for tuning in to, um, to, to join this late, latest in a long line of um, really interesting one on one domain uh, webinars. Keep it up, Joe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks one on one domain. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Joe.